Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to assemble a dart and sleeve CP piston Carrillo rod built by VRP. I'll put their link down below. They also have ported heads for us from VRP. We got some billet camshafts, VRP head studs. This is gonna be the end all AMG engine, 6.2 liter, 6.3 liter, however you wanna call it, for the E63, C63, and other variants. So I hope you like this video. Let's get started. All right guys, so first we have the timing cover here. Rusty is going to explain to us where all we put the silicone, exactly how much, and then we're gonna put it on the engine. This right here is the silicone we suggest. It's the right stuff, so obviously is what we need. Okay, so I've gone ahead and prepped this timing cover, went ahead and cleaned all the surfaces for silicone, and I put all new three seals in here, the crank seal, the idler seal inside of here, and then this PCV seal. Do not forget to replace these or that will leak down the road. So now this is all cleaned up, we're gonna go ahead, apply some silicone to anything that is shiny and prepped for silicone. You don't wanna go on too thick, it's a nice little bead around here. And I'll come back and touch up any spots that I'm not happy with after I go over everything. Don't forget the little guys in the center here, these little circles. All right, and just to make sure there's no bare spots, I take my finger and just smooth stuff out just a little bit. It's not as pretty this way, but I've never had one leak, so I'm gonna keep doing it this way. All right, so now we're gonna move this over to the engine and Craig's gonna help me with the timing chains. So I went ahead and got the chains on here, chains and guides. Guides are lubricated with our liquid molly assembly paste. I also went ahead and replaced the seal for the oil pump and the pickup tube o-ring. Sometimes these parts are hard to get. You have to wait a little bit for them, but do not risk it. If these parts fail, you're gonna be in big trouble. So make sure those, those are new. All right, I'm gonna hold the chains. See the right here, this needs to be accessible for the timing cover. So you wanna hold it like that. Hold the other side to keep that off there. That's completely sealed. You can see right there where it's pressed up against the block. This is centered. Nice, 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 nice. All right, guys, Rusty's going to zip in the bolts for the timing cover. And while he does that, I wanted to let you guys know we do offer this service. This engine, we will not be putting fully together. No accessories, no water pump. We are just building the short block together and then assembling the heads and all that good stuff and timing all the timing components from valve cover to oil pan and the customer will pick up like that. So if you need that service done, we will take care of you. And we will set down our old faithful liquid molly rag so we can place our cake pan down. These are all the front timing cover bolts. Rusty is organized. And the cool thing about this, not only because we're using Phil's mom's cake pan again, shout out to VRP down below, but we got this motor completely in a million pieces. And the machine shop did all the bottom end stuff, but Rusty, out of his all knowing wisdom, is just gonna pick one of these up and put it where it goes. You just have a gift. Yeah, I guess. Let's zip a few of these things in here. Now we're going to seal up this lower oil pan here, well, upper oil pan. And just make sure you have these services nice and clean so this seals up properly. If you don't have one of these caulk guns for the silicone, I highly recommend. It helps you get everything on there nice and even. I even think Craig has added these to our Amazon store if you want to grab one for yourself. Alright, 
that's looking good. And now we're gonna put it down on the engine. All right, guys, we are putting on the upper oil pan now. The rusty done hooked us up with the right stuff. Oh, look at that. Look at that. The customer was nice enough to bag and tag all these bolts and label them, which makes it super convenient for me to just dump in this uh, cake pan here and use them. So let's get started. So unfortunately, the customers supplied what we thought was the oil pan bolts. It was no, those labeled oil pan bolts were not the correct ones. We're gonna call him, but until then, I have a spare motor here. We're gonna remove all the bolts from it and utilize these. That's why it is always important when you're doing any of this stuff and you're getting stuff brought in from all over the country to have extra parts. It's essential. I've always told Rusty, no matter what car I build, I always have a, a backup parts car just because anything can happen. All right, guys, now that we have acquired the bolts for the oil pan, let's get started. You'll note that the clean ones go on the outside and the oil covered ones go on the inside. Makes it easy to tell. And then the flat ones are for the upper oil pans, the e torques. E <laughs> All right guys, after you zip them in with the gun, go around, hit them with the wrench about a quarter turn and just snug them up. And then when you're done that, just go around again and just make sure you hit every single one so you know that you're good. You do not want a leaking oil pan. All right, we're all set. Let's get the lower oil pans on. All right guys, we got our first lower oil pan. This will be the front lower oil pan. Rusty's gonna hit her with the right stuff. And again, the right stuff will be on Amazon, link down below. And that basically looks like my signature right about there. The cake pan bolts. And then remember, two don't go in yet, or the oil cooler lines where they would go. Right here, these two that are in conjunction or parallel, however you want to call it. You want to save those for the trans cooler, oil cooler, whatever one it is. Or actually, we want this one and this one. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and put both of them in. I'm um, just thinking about it, this motor not being picked up for a little bit. We'll go ahead and seal it overnight and then I'll pull those back out once the silicone is sealed. is going to go ahead and silicone the rear lower oil pan. This is the one that you actually drain the oil from. You can see the drain plug spot right there. All right, now Rusty's gonna go around and snug them all up by hand. You wanna make sure you do this every time, never trust the power tool. All right. Quick commercial break while we're building the motor. We also painted the floors on the other side of the shop, our speed lane. 
we turn this into this. So this episode is brought to you by Rust-Oleum Rock Solid. We wanted to do something that you guys could do too. It's great. We'll put some clips in of cleaning the floor and all that stuff, but this did an awesome job. The, the floor looks beautiful. It has a way better echo in here now. What do you think, Russell? I like it. Brightens oh, yeah. it up. Heads up. Rustoleum, rock solid. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back. We're gonna flip this bad boy over and we're gonna get started. We are going to put on some ported heads, some billet camshafts, and some VRP head studs. All right, let's spin her over. Now, look at those beautiful pistons. Look at that. These are the Preston Darton sleeves and there's brand new pistons. All right, guys, we have the VRP head studs, nuts and washers. I'm gonna lay them here so we can easily get to them. And you know where I need to set these washers and nuts? In the cake pan. Good chow. These are actually stronger than the ARP ones that WiseTech and others sell. We have a set here. So these are the ARP ones. And you install those with a little Torx or Allen key, whatever that is. Similar, but the VRP is actually stronger being H13. So there's a nice little comparison. And these are on sale right now at vrp.com. I'll put the link below. Just don't tell Phil that I said they're on sale. Just email info at vrpspeed.com and be like, hey, we saw that these were on sale. I'm pretty sure you'll get a sale price. So, link down below. Just use code Bucky at checkout. We do need a code. Cake pan. Oh, that is our coupon code. Actually, I'm gonna make that our coupon code. I'm gonna call Phil and I'm gonna say, Phil, I'm making a video of the head studs. I want them people to call in or you know use the coupon code cake pan for 10 percent off the head studs in fact i'm gonna call him right now let's see if he answers so as we were getting ready to assemble this engine we noticed that all four of the alignment dowels for the cylinder heads uh, were on this block because they machined it. Um, there was a box at the machine shop that they said they were, uh, of the stuff for this motor, they said they were gonna send. We haven't got that yet. We just assembled two other ones, um, same builds as these. So th they, they already had them on there. All right, but luckily you may recognize this block from Legit street cars. This was the giveaway C63 engine. We use it to stabilize this cart. Um, it's a wonderful paperweight. That's basically all it can be used for. But it still has all four alignment dowels perfectly in the block. So, with no further ado. Boom, one down. There we go. Yay. And that's it, that's the alignment sleeve. And we're gonna go ahead and insert these bad boys. That will help our alignment head gasket and the cylinder head. So right here, this is a coolant passageway and the head gasket will lay here. Since there's a split here with the timing cover and the uh, engine block, it needs silicone. So Rusty's gonna perfectly clean this up with a razor blade to prep it for some new silicone. It's obviously already been cleaned up some, but we're just gonna get some last minute precise cleaning in there. And then we will silicone around that. Place the head gasket, silicone the head gasket, and then we'll be ready to set the cylinder head. And now we will place the new head gasket on, line it up with the dowels, all is well. Part number is right there. I will zoom into that. And there she is. That's part number. Factory multi-layer steel gaskets are the best. Now we will silicone the head gasket and then we'll be ready to place our 
cylinder head. Like a glove, Russ is gonna install the two front bolts for a little bit of safety to keep it on there while we're going to town on the head studs. Rusty is going to take and start putting the right stuff, silicone, on the top threads of the head studs. And then the bottom, where we insert it into the block, we will use the ARP Ultra Torque Fastener Lube Assembly Lubricant. So bottom, silicone on the top, then we will put them in, and then we will silicone the washers and the heads of the bolts. That's to keep coolant into the coolant passageways and not up through the head studs. And it's 10 per side. So we'll do the first 10, we'll secure this head, and then we'll move on to the other head. All right, now Rusty's going to start installing them again. Ultra Torque Fastener Assembly Lubricant at the bottom and silicone at the top. And we're just gonna gently slide them in their hose. Let them bottom out. And when you get these in, you just snug them up. There's no torque spec, not for the stud. Just get them, get them in, get them tight with your ratchet. Like kind of like a spark plug, how you like? Not even. Really? You feel it bottom out and then it's like, right, this one just bottomed out. Well, not even that just yet. Sometimes they catch in the bore of the cylinder head because they're not perfectly straight the way they're, they're made. But you'll feel it bottom out. Definitely don't impact these. Put them in by hand. Hey, wait a second. second. That's a really nice ratchet. Thanks. Where'd you get that? My friend gave it to me. You gave? Yeah. <laughs> I let you use it like six months ago. I haven't seen it. I was wondering where it went. Well, what mine is, what's mine is yours. Yeah. So Rusty is going to start separating the nuts and the washers. There is a top and bottom. So the flat spot is the bottom and the little bit of a beveled spot is the top. So flat is the bottom, beveled is the top. Both get silicone along with the bottom of the nut here. Okay, so you have your washer here. It needs a thin layer of silicone on the top and bottom. Make sure everything is clean and dry, there's no oil on it. Also make sure the inside of the cylinder head is clean and dry. Obviously we don't have to worry about that because these are fresh from the machine shop from being ported. But if you're doing this in the car, some brake clean, some air will fix you right up. This is time sensitive. You, want, you don't want to silicone these and then not torque them, you know, within a couple hours. Um, you want to just keep moving until at least one side's torqued if you have silicone on there. So what I do to make it easy is I grab a real long screwdriver, put the washer on there, line it up, and then push it down till it seats in there flat. And just keep moving until you have all the washers in. So flat spot is the bottom, beveled is the top. And just keep moving. All right, down to the last two on this side. And again, the rounded beveled side is the top. Flat side is the bottom. And just take your time sliding it onto that stud. And 
need a little bit more on this one. Sometimes you put it on a little too thin. You do not want coolant to seep up through there. All right, moving on to the nuts. Nuts are the same process, except you're going to put just silicone on the bottom there. And we're gonna just snug them up on each of the holes and we'll go through the torque spec. Okay, so silicone on the bottom. Get a nice extension. We have a 9 16 12 point socket. And you're going to just run them down hand tight until we get everything ready to torque. All right guys, now that we have the nuts and washers in, Rusty is going to torque them to... 55 Newton meters to three stage torque procedure. And I'll announce each setting as I go to the next step. So we're gonna start with 55 Newton meters. You're gonna work from the inside out. And for people that are just watching this briefly, it's 55 Newton meters, 110, and then 150 Newton meters. And you start from the inside out. So if you wanna screenshot that, there you go. And once I've gone through one stage, I like to put a mark next to each hole just to make sure I got each one. So whenever I'm done, each hole will have three marks so that I know each hole has been torqued to the three-step procedure. And the second one will be 110 Newton meters. Second mark. And now it'll be 150 Newton meters. 150. And with the third one, we like to mark it as we go just so it's the third and final and we don't like to miss any of them. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is all three on one bank. All right, guys, my handy dandy helper filled me up a fresh batch of lifter soup. So like we did in our last video, we have to add some MOS2 to it. So we are going to unpackage our black series tappets and put them in our soup. Shake this up really good. You gotta really thoroughly shake it where it doesn't count and it just won't even work. Just mix her on in. This is actually what Liquid Molly started out making and what they're known for is their MOS2 anti-friction engine treatment. So definitely order some of these. They're nice to have around. Here is the label that was on it. It's all oily because they become they come lubricated. But that is the black series part number for any of you guys wanting that all right so i will cut these open and we'll pull the first one out and check it out but that's it you can see the black coating these are so cool they look awesome but realistically i've seen them fail just as much as the other ones at the end of the day this is a different material than the cam is made out of so without, without proper lubrication or this gets bound up, um, it's, it's going to tear into it. And in fact, let me show you. I found these the other day. Here is two examples of what can happen, how they can fail. Like you can tell the cam just ate into these. 
bottoms are still intact and the cam lube just tore into them. So you don't want this to happen. So replace these as maintenance, if anything. And then always do awesome aftermarket VRP cams. But yeah, time to get started. So we're going to open up these bad boys, and dump them in our soup and let them prime. And then we'll be able to drop them into our engine. I'm about to take all the cam caps off. I set up my lifter soup and I put this rag here so when I'm taking it out of the bucket, I don't drop any in the head so I don't have to clean up a bigger mess later. But I'm gonna take all the cam caps off and I'm gonna organize them and set them here to so make it easy. While I'm doing that, Rusty is going to be putting in the alignment pins for the, the timing idler gears. I'm also throwing in this last timing chain guide. You got to have this idler loose to get it in there so you can slide it out of the way. I also went ahead and lubricated these idlers with liquid molly paste so everything spins freely. The old assembly lube paste. You know, no pressure on any of this. It's just a $30,000 short block that we're putting $5,000 heads on and $8,000 billet camshaft, so no worries. Just another day in the office. All right, nice and shiny. That's what we like to see. And now we will go fishing. You just put places in there and make sure they spin freely back and forth. And you can see the MOS2 bonding to the metal which is quite fascinating looking. Oh, well, that one. You gotta be quicker than that. I had to, I had to, that was a catch and release. Just wasn't big enough. All right, guys, we got the timing idlers in. We have all of our Black Series tappets in and our beautiful ported heads. Ciao. Look at that. Look at that. And now we will prep the billet camshafts. Check this out. This is a billet camshaft. This is not an OEM camshaft. This is a completely new billet hardened camshaft. You can see the tips on it have already been heat treated and coated. This is incredible. This is the exhaust cam. This is just really cool. So this is our first time using billet camshafts, but very cool. All right, guys, so it looks like we have our engine set just like the last video at 40 degrees. So we are ready to throw in our cams, which I'm over here. I have been behind the scenes, diligently working hard. These are my intake camshafts. These are my exhaust camshafts, and I have started the liquid molly assembly paste process as you can see here and i will begin to rub all that in and we have our cam caps for both sides organized and these will replace the factory bolts they are titanium camshaft bolts not to brag but i have these also no big deal they are amazing they are fancy. It's basically the men's version of diamonds. I mean, look at that beautiful titanium hardware. You can get that from VRP. It'll be in the link at the bottom. So we're going to quickly lubricate all of our cams, go through, get all the lobes. And again, these are billet. I repeat, billet. Everybody say it with me. B is for, this is what I teach my children, B is for billet. These are billet camshafts. If you'd like a, a set of these things or a set of awesome VRP camshafts that I picked up 60 wheel horsepower with, you can get them from VRP as well. So just reach out to them guys. They will facilitate any of your M156 part needs or I'll help you get them. Call me, I'm a vendor for VRP. I will get you right. Some will say, I'll get you up to speed. Some say, we'll get you going. We'll get you going. When 
you use aftermarket camshafts in the factory cam uh, caps. Correct. Caps. I cannot remember that word. <laughs> when you use the factory cam caps with the aftermarket camshafts or different cylinder head or something like that, you may run into some binding. So you'll take the cam cap off, polish it, refit it, and then all will be well. All right, now we're slowly working the cam caps down until they're fully seated. And then we will back the cam bolts out one at a time to put the titanium ones in. If you have the factory bolts, I don't like to run the cams down with the, with the titanium ones. Just use the factory ones and then swap them out and then torque them. All right guys, we're moving on to the next step. We are going to time the engine. All right, now we'll show you from the back what needs to happen. As you can see, the small, was it moon shaped or whatever? Uh, I call it a half moon right here. Uh, there's a big loop and a smaller loop, just half of that little circle on the camshaft. You want that slot to be even with the surface of the cylinder head so that this can snap in there. And you're going to have to turn the cam a little bit until it lines up and it will pop in. And that is how it looks. This is where we're gonna finish with this project. Now that we have it buttoned up, we have some cellophane right here to wrap this thing up and prepare for shipping. So this is where we'll leave you. All right guys, we hoped you enjoyed watching us build this bulletproof M156 with its ported heads, its darting sleeves, it's CP Piston and Krilla Rods. Then give us a big thumbs up. Share with your friends. Subscribe. And as always, leave a comment about Rusty in the comments. Testing, testing, testing one, two, testing three, four, testing audio, video, testing. Why don't you just give him a quick rundown? I love how crooked that looks. I, know, I was worried about that. Is it looking there? Oh, no, because this leg isn't down the hallway. Rusty's drawing. A picture for the background. For Olivia. And uh, Anthony is going to now do our ending. So, Anthony, you'll have to edit however you want that. I hope you're having a blessed, good day and feeling better. So. You want a pair of gloves too? Yeah. <laughs> we literally have Modern Masters hats, but that'll work. <laughs> There's like oil in that glove. Oh, yeah. My confidence is growing. Rogaine now comes in the form of gloves. Yeah. Napa Auto Parts, how can I help you? <laughs> Phil, it's Craig, Modern hey, Masters. Hey, not much. Um, I So I'm doing a video on a fully built motor and I, I forgot to give you a call yesterday. Couldn't get a hold of you. But um, how about we give these guys a 10% coupon code off uh, of the head studs for coupon code cake pan? Uh, if you give it back to my mother, then sure. Gosh. You know what, for you guys, I will surrender the cake pan so you can get 10% off the head studs. Is that a deal? Sure, yeah, I'll set that up. 
All right, you heard it here. That's Phil from VRP. So I got you guys that coupon. We'll link that down below. All right, cool. That's all you need. That's all I needed. All right, cool. Talk all to you later. All right, bye. Bye.